My dear brothers and sisters and my young friends, greetings. My name is Radha Sukhani. I'm a medical doctor by profession. Today we are going to talk about water. How much, what kind and when to drink. Just imagine if you had a question like that 25 or 30 years ago and you would say no. Then why is that question now? The answer is very simple. Our foods have changed and our water drinking habits have changed. That is why we have this problem. Our food has become more of factory made food, which is very dry, very low in water content, very rich in salt and sugar. Our water has become more of commercial drinks, which have sugar and additives, caffeine and whatnot. This creates a state of water imbalance in the body. And if there is water imbalance in the body, physical health suffers and mental health suffers. And that is why we have this big question, water, how much should we be drinking? When we should be drinking and what kind of water we should be drinking? Those of you who are interested in the written version of this talk, then they can go to our website www.foodlifestylebalance.com. This current video which you are watching also will be posted on this website in the YouTube section and also on the website. Now, water, as you all know, is the essential nutrient for the body. It is necessity of the body. It sustains life. 60 to 65 percent of our body weight is water. We can live without food for three to four weeks. We cannot live without water for more than three or five days. So it is so essential to life. Now, with relation to water, we will be discussing seven points. Number one, water. Why do we have this new attention on water in the last 25, 30 years? What is our natural water balance? What are the benefits of maintaining natural water balance? How much water we should drink? What kind of water would she drink? Plain water, sports drinks, vitamin water, or just natural water, not in plastic bottles. So we'll discuss all that. Next, exercise and the water need. When plain water is enough and when do we have to drink electrolyte water? And we'll talk about electrolyte water quite a bit. And finally, when to drink, what are the common sense rules? No made up, eight by eight, eight by 10 glasses and so forth. Now, why is this new attention on the water? Simply, as I said in the beginning, we are snacking too much and we are eating too much of pre-prepared fast foods, junk foods, which are very low in water. Packaged foods, box foods, all these foods have literally no water and they are very rich in sugar and salt. When we eat very dry foods, to digest the dry food, the body has to leave its water to the digestive tract or in other words, a lot of water gets squeezed out into the digestive tract. So the body stays in a state of persistent dehydration. Then again, if there is so much salt and sugar in the food, then the kidneys take up and then they get rid of excessive salt via urine along with the water. So excessive sugar and salt again puts us behind in water. So these together create such a situation that we are always in low water balance or what we call as persistent dehydration state. Now, what many of the people in the cities do that they have replaced a lot of their water drinking to the sugary drinks and sodas and instead of fruit, drinking fruit juices. Just imagine that one glass of orange juice has sweetness of four oranges, which you drink within two to three minutes. So when you are drinking sodas or fruit juices, which are very rich in sugar, you have a high risk of getting obesity, high risk of diabetes, high risk of damaging your teeth. Furthermore, your soda drinks do not have regular cane sugar in it. It has chemical sugar called high fructose corn syrup, which is made from corn. 
Now, high fructose corn syrup is well known in medicine to cause fatty liver. And fatty liver, as you all know, is the beginning of practically every modern disease, such as diabetes, heart disease, PCOD, and so forth, long list. Also, a lot of soda drinks are acidic in nature, especially those brown drinks like Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola have a very low pH or very high acid content. And because of high acidity, there is osteoporosis loss of calcium from the bones. Every time we eat acidic foods and we uh, drink acidic liquids, we have more osteoporosis. And we'll talk about it a little bit more later on how many bad things we are doing nowadays in our food and drink that we have so much osteoporosis in public. So uh, doctors, dietitians, nutritionists are constantly telling us drink more water. Now, why drink more water? simply because people are in a state of persistent dehydration or low water in their bodies. And they typically, these people will tell you, drink eight glasses of water, 10 glasses of water, or 12 glasses of water. Imagine if you spend your entire day in a cool environment like air conditioned room, and you're hardly walking, you're hardly exercising, where there's no sweating at all, then you don't need a whole lot of water. And if you drink eight to 10 glasses of water, you'll be going to the bathroom eight to 10 times. And it gets to be annoying, it's useless. On the other hand, if you are sweating a lot in hot weather, exercising, then you lose a lot of water. And that eight or 10 glasses will be only good enough for three or four hours. So this standard formula of eight to 12 glasses a day does not work. Now, what is our natural water balance? As I said, most of our body is water. Younger the child, more the water content in the body. So a small infant and a baby may have 70 to 80% of their body weight as water. A adult male has 60% of body weight as water and a female has 50% of body weight as water. Why this difference between male and female? Simply because females have more fatty tissue and males have more muscles. Muscles have 70% water and fatty tissue has only 10% water. As we get older and cross 70 years of age, then our muscles get replaced with fat and again the water content of the body goes down. So an elderly male over the age of 70 will have 50% of their body weight as water. And when you have a low water content, like in a child or in the elderly, your chances of getting low water in the body is very high. Now, kidneys are our great equalizers. They are the magic organ which controls our water balance. And if the water content of the body goes up, the kidneys throw out extra water from the body. And when the water content of the body goes down, the kidneys conserve it. Now, I want to make one thing clear to you that it is much harder for the kidneys to retain the water than let go of the water. So if your body content of water is low, the kidneys have to work very hard to conserve that water. At the same time, if you are eating too much of salt, then kidneys have to work hard to get rid of that salt. And along with the salt, they get rid of water also. Along with the salt, imagine you're also losing calcium. So more salt you take in your food, more osteoporosis you will have because you will be losing calcium. So I already talked about acidic food and acidic drinks causing osteoporosis. Now I'm saying that if your food is too salty, also then you will lose more of calcium from your bones and get osteoporosis. And the third reason why people get osteoporosis is because they are not moving much or not are very sedentary habits. So when you're not moving around much, your muscles are not moving. And how do our bones get their blood flow? They get it from the muscles. When the muscle contracts, then the blood is squeezed and go, goes to the bones. But if your muscles are not contracting, your bones are starving. So the three reasons for osteoporosis, why we have epidemic of osteoporosis in cities is acidic foods, acidic drinks, too much salt in the diet, and no movement. So you can take tons of calcium, Tons of sunrise vitamin D, 
it is not going to help you. What will help you is eat alkaline food, cut down your salt and keep moving. Now there are two great signals which tell us about water balance. Number one, urine color and frequency and the other signal is our thirst signal. If your urine color is light, straw colored or light yellow in color and you are going for urination more than four times a day, you are well hydrated. On the other hand, if the urine color is very dark, dark yellow or even brownish and you are going for urination less than three times a day, you are very much behind in water. You need four or five glasses of water to drink to get it moving. The other signal we have of low water balance is thirst. So again, if our food is rich in sugar and salt, our thirst signal gets messed up and we still stay in a state of persistent dehydration. Children ignore thirst altogether. They are too busy playing or too busy doing things. So they have to be reminded of drinking. Children have one more problem. They confuse thirst with hunger. So when they are thirsty, they'll ask for a snack. So if your child or even an adult is looking for a snack in an untimely manner, they just had a meal two hours ago and now they want to eat a snack, just know that they are thirsty. So drink a glass of water before thinking about food and you'll be amazed. You won't need the food. You won't need your snack. The other group of people who have thirst signal problem is elderly over the age of 70 years. They have a very weak thirst signal. So elderly get dehydrated or get low water very fast. So elderly have to make an attempt to make sure that they are drinking appropriate amount of water. Now, as I said, um, we came up with eight by eight rule, drink eight glasses of water and each glass is eight ounces. That comes to about two to 2.5 liters. Now, where did that number come from? Simply, it came from the way body loses its water even when it is not sweating or moving. Okay, so under rest, we lose about 2 to 2.5 liters of water in one day. So about 600 cc of this water is lost through the skin and through the lungs. Imagine when you're sweating and you're exercising, this may be many liters. Okay, urine output under resting condition when you are not exercising too much and whatnot still remains 1 to 1.5 liters. And we lose about 250 to 300 milliliters of water through our stools. So if you combine all these water loss under rest, it comes to 2 to 2.5 liters, which really equates to 8 to 10 glasses of water, each glass 8 ounces, 2 to 2.5 liters. So this formula of 8 to 8 or 8 to 10 came from there. Now, who invented this 8 by 8 rule? Food and Nutrition Board of United States of America, where the climate is not very hot. So they advised in 1945 that suitable allowance of water is 2.5 liters a day. And if you are sweating and exercising, then you can drink more. But imagine what they said. They said most of this water comes from their cooked food. Almost 30 to 40 percent of this water comes from cooked food. Imagine what they were doing in 1945, eating home cooking. They were not eating snacks, dry foods, fast foods and junk foods. So their food had a lot of water in it. So that is why they said, take it into consideration. So even in that era, 2 to 2.5 liters was not eight glasses or 10 glasses. It was three or four glasses because most of the water came from food. But what has changed in the last 50 years? Our food has become too dry. So instead of getting 30 to 35% of water from our freshly prepared meal, which is a lot of liquid in it, salads, fruits, vegetables, with water in it, we are eating more of dry foods. So dry foods always put us behind in water. Now, how do we maintain our water balance? Uh, we already talked about it. And now we are going to talk about benefits of water balance. Now, as I said, vast majority of the organs in the body are very rich in water. Only two systems which are low in water is fat, and our bones, but brain, most of it is water, lungs, our liver, our intestines, 
everything is 70 to 75 percent water. Now, what are the benefits of water balance? Number one on the top is maintaining blood volume. Proper amount of blood hydration. It means enough amount of water in our blood. When we have enough amount of water in our blood, our tissues get enough of oxygen and nutrients. Have you seen that when you get little vomiting, diarrhea, or you sweat too much, you want to lay down on the bed. You don't want to even sit up and stand simply because enough water is not in the blood and enough blood is not reaching the tissues or muscles to provide oxygen and nutrients. So if you keep yourself hydrated, you will be able to sit and stand up. So keeping hydration for appropriate blood volume is vital, important. The second benefit of water balance is digestion. You will not believe, but our digestive tract produces 8 liters, almost 30 to 40 glasses of digestive juices every day to digest the food. Imagine if you're not drinking enough water, you're eating a lot of dry food. Where is that water coming from? That water is being squeezed out from the rest of the body tissues and coming to the digestive tract. That's why people who consume a lot of salt, sugar, they are always behind in water. If they consume a lot of dry foods, then they're always behind in water because a lot of that water for digestion is squeezed out from the body. Now you'll be amazed that when you eat food rich in water content, digestion is very fast. So if you're eating fruits and vegetables, those fruits and vegetables get digested within three to six hours. On the other hand, if you eat pre-prepared fast foods, junk foods, which are very low in water, or dry grains and dry lentils, say for example, you will need 16 to 24 hours to digest it. So then what is the proper balance for good digestion? The proper balance of the food for good digestion is keep the ratio of dry food to wet food one to four, one to five, even one to six. So if you are eating one chapati, that weight in vegetables should be four times as much. So ratio of one to four minimum. If you keep it higher, all the more better for your digestion. Now, the other benefits of water balance is maintaining blood pressure and heart rate. When the body goes low on water or dehydrated, then blood pressure drops and the heart rate goes faster. Your heart has to work much harder. So to maintain your blood pressure, maintain your heart rate. If you think your heart is running fast, drink some water. The second benefit is lubricate the joints because joints have fluid in it. So if you are well hydrated, you will be able to run faster and better. Third advantage and benefit of maintaining water balance is body temperature. And this is so true in children. When they get little diarrhea and vomiting, the first thing is their temperature goes up very high. So proper hydration is very important for maintaining a temperature balance in the body. Now, our kidneys depend on water. They are the first organ which suffers when the body is low on water. If the body is low on water, very low on water, within three to four days, the kidneys may go into failure even. And we know that when the water content is low, there's more kidney infections, there's more kidney stones. So you want your kidney health, maintain your water balance. Now, nature has been very kind to us. Even when we are very little deficient in water, say two or four glasses, we get good clues. We have to pay attention to those clues. So one of the clues is if you feel irritable, you feel that you are not in a good mood, drink some water. If you start getting headache or dizziness, drink some water. One of the big reasons for chronic migraine and headache in modern city population is they are always persistently dehydrated because they are eating too much dry foods, too much snacks, rich in salt and sugar. Very angry and our cultural tradition is if you are angry, drink two glasses of cold water with a lot of truth in it. If you feel hot or if your temperature is going up, first thing is hydrate yourself. And most importantly, when you get hungry in an untimely fashion, instead of running for a snack, 
running run first for a glass of water so we said that modern city population is in a state of persistent dehydration because they are eating a lot of packaged food and they are drinking a lot of sugary drinks now there is another uh, medical situation i will say where uh, you get very low on water number one if you have been out in sun too long what you call as heat stroke where you are sweated so much your body has been exposed to so much heat and lost so much water that you become very deficient in water and your body temperature goes up second if you have nausea vomiting dehydration from upset stomach you get low on water very fast and it is a, a lot of deficiency of water third uh, situation where you get very very low on water is temperature high temperature fever so in these situations you can be 2 to 2.5 or more low on water almost 8 to 16 glasses and the water you are going to replace is not plain water you will have to drink electrolyte water electrolyte water means water which is acid more of sodium and potassium in it and we are going to talk about it a little bit later now we talked all about low water can we have too much water in our bodies yes too much water in the body is called water intoxication why intoxication that because when you are too much uh, have too much water in your body then the level of sodium in the body goes down and when the level of the sodium in the body or salt goes down then the brain gets swollen and the person starts behaving as if they are drunk or they are intoxicated with the with the drugs so uh, it, if somebody feels that they are not right then most likely they are drinking lot more plain water so too much water in the body occurs when you are drinking lots and lots of water and that water is plain water it is not electrolyte water and that situation occurs when somebody is running a marathon race or a competitive athlete they are sweating a lot but they are replacing that lost sweat not in electrolyte water but in plain water so typically if somebody is drinking 6 to 8 glasses of water an hour for 4 to 5 hours they have high chances of getting water intoxication if that water is plain water not electrolyte water so if you are losing lot in sweat in your exercise in your athletics what do you have to do electrolyte water how much water should we be drinking as i said almost 30 to 35% of the water uh, at least minimum 20 to 25% of water comes to us from freshly prepared food and imagine how much snacks we are eating in a day and that's the reason we are behind in water so food choice is very important in our water balance so if you are eating freshly cooked food you don't need that much water 8 by 8 rule as i told you 8 by 8 and rule doesn't work because 8 by 8 rule is a western concept it's a concept that when you are under rest how much water you are losing but there are situation especially in a hot environment and tropical countries where people sweat much more their water requirement is much higher and they have more water loss at the same time if you are doing competitive sports and running then you need much more water and if you are really exercising very hard then you need not plain water but electrolyte water so we will talk about common sense rules forget about 8 by 8 8 by 10 doesn't apply to everyone so what are the common sense rules do not ignore your thirst it is the best signal nature has given us but in order to honor that signal we have to keep safe and clean water with us all the time not in plastic bottles non plastic bottles follow the cultural tradition we have had in our country in india ayurveda start drinking water first thing in the morning and always drink water before your meal and after your meal for the best digestion and best health because if you drink water before your meal you will not overeat decrease salt and sugar intake in your water because when you have more salt and more sugar you will always be behind in water decrease your dry food stop snacking too much when you feel like eating a snack drink a glass of water maintain your urine output at least minimum 4 to 5 times per day 
if your urine output or if you go voiding or urination less than four times a day, it means you're not drinking enough water. Follow the cues of low water balance. And I said, nature has given us great clues. If you feel irritable, if you feel a little headache, if you think your energy is down, you're low on battery and vitality and energy, drink two glasses of water, you will have more energy. If you think you're feeling hot or if you have slight temperature, drink more water. If you're angry, drink two glasses of cold water. And if you are hungry on untimely manner, then drink some water before you go for food. Now, water needs certainly goes up very high when you're sweating too much, like when you're exercising, when you're out in the sun or when you're in a very hot environment and using a lot of fan, which is really blowing away a lot of water from the skin. So in those situations, your water requirement may be as high as one liter per hour and one liter means at least three to four glasses and you may need it for five to six hours. Uh, drink one hour before exercise and drink three to five hours after exercise to maintain your water balance. But if you are doing intense exercise or you're sweating a lot, you are better off not only replacing it with plain water, but also drinking some electrolyte. Now, how do you know you're well hydrated? As I said before, your urine is the best signal. If your urine is straw colored and you're avoiding or going for urination more than four times a day, it means you're well hydrated. But if your urine is very dark, dark yellow or brown in color, and you're avoiding less than four times a day, it means you need three, four glasses of water to make up for the loss. You know that when you're taking some medication such as vitamin B complex, then your urine will become yellow and this signal will be tainted a little bit. Then you go with frequency. How many times a day are you going for urination? Now, kidneys, as I said, is the great equalizer maintains the water balance in the body and it is the one which suffers the most when there is less water in the body because it is work very hard and sometimes when there is very low water content in the body kidneys are the first organ which fails so make sure the amount of urine is at least 800 cc a day preferably 2000 or two liters a day frequency four to five times a day amount voided 250 to 300 cc you are having very small volume of voiding, which is dark in color, you are very, very low on water. So again, we'll repeat the rules. Drink when you're thirsty, keep water available with you all the time in non-plastic bottle. Drink when your urine color is dark, drink two to three glasses. Drink during exercise, before exercise, after exercise. Drink extra water when you have had salty food. Get ate out in a restaurant where there's a lot of salt, drink extra water. When you have one drink, drink one glass of water. For every drink, drink one glass of water. I would suggest that don't drink too much. And when you are eating sweet food, also drink extra water. What kind of water to drink? That's always a big question from people. Now, why are we asking what kind of water? Because commercial beverage industry is creating so many kinds of water for us. In the 20th century, people were drinking a lot of sugary sodas. Coke, Pepsi and all hundred varieties of other drinks. But then people got very smart and they stopped drinking sugary sodas. So beverage industry got very smart. They started making what we call now specialty drinks. And most importantly, they started selling water in a plastic bottle. Do you know that Pepsi Cola and Coca-Cola company are making way more money out of bottled water than they are making out of the drinks. We imagine that water is making them a lot of income. And instead of buying that expensive bottle, you can have your own water right out of the tap. 50% of the bottled water which you drink is coming out of the taps. In addition, we have specialty drinks now like sports drinks, vitamin water. And each one of these drinks have a problem that they have chemical sugar high fructose corn syrup or artificial sweeteners if they are zero calorie drinks. And artificial drinks, uh, sweeteners like aspartame, xylulose and sucralose and whatever have one problem that they destroy our digestion. At the same time, they set up a system in our brain of food cravings because sweeteners are perceived as sweets and the body is looking for sweet. So body is looking for food. And you can imagine 
that artificial sweeteners are almost 200 to 300 times as sweet as regular cane sugar. So even if you are drinking zero calorie drinks, which have artificial sweeteners in it, you still run a high risk of obesity, fatty liver disease, diabetes, cavities, and bone thinning and osteoporosis. So whenever you go to a dietitian, nutritionist, and a doctor, they'll say, oh, drink lemon water and you lose weight. Now, lemon water is no magic in helping you lose weight. The magic of lemon water lies in having no calories at all. In contrast to that, fruit juices, which have zero fiber, who are very rich in fructose sugar and have 100 to 200 calories, are fattening. And fruit juice is a fashion nowadays. So fruit juice, leave it only for old, for sick, and for babies who cannot chew the fruit. As far as you are concerned, instead of fruit juices, just if you can chew, you have to eat your fruit, not drink your fruit. So practically every commercial drink, even specialty drinks which are available, have lots of sugar in it. A cola drink, which is 300 to 350 cc's, nine spoons. Your vitamin water has six teaspoons of sugar. Sports drinks have very high amount of sugar because they are 500 cc big uh, bottles and they have as much as 10 to 12 teaspoons of sugar. So keep in mind that if you are having four bottles of your sports drink, how much sugar you have already consumed. Now, when people got smart, the beverage industry got very smart. They knew now people don't want any sweeteners. They do not want artificial sweeteners. So they start selling now carbonated drinks, which are flavored, flavored, and they'll tell you orange drink. There is no orange in it. It is only orange essence, berry drink, only berry essence. And basically, they have only flavor and carbonation, and the taste comes from carbonation. Do know that they want you, the beverage industry wants you to stay addicted to your drinks, so they add a lot of caffeine and other additives which are addicting. So keep in mind that you check the contents of your soda before you drink it. But better still, get smarter. And that's what people in Europe and America are doing. They are getting smarter. They are getting ahead of beverage industry by setting up carbonation machine in their own home. And these carbonation machines are not very expensive at all. And in India, I saw five or six carbonation machines are available, home carbonation machines. So you can infuse your water with fresh fruit, carbonate it, and your kids are going to love it. So start how to carbonate your own drink. And there is no harm in drinking a carbonated drink couple a day. Now, I want to talk about sports drinks. The sports drinks are very popular with athletes because they think they are getting electrolytes and they can run, do marathons and all that. And they have to do is keep on drinking few bottles a day. Imagine if you want to buy a liter of a sports drink like a Gatorade and all in India, it will cost you 100 to 150 rupees. So by the end of a marathon, you would have had two or 3,000 worth of sports drink. And how, what does sport drink have basically in the name of electrolytes? Sodium 400 to 500 milligram per liter, potassium 130 to 150 milligram per liter, and sugar 50 to 60 gram per liter. Now tell me, why can't you make it at home? I say easy. Easy for no cost at all. Because you have salt at home, you have jaggery at home. So you take eight cups of water, which is two liters, add sea salt, which is like desi namak, or Himalayan pink salt, half a teaspoon. You want, don't want refined salt because refined salt retains a lot of water. So half a teaspoon of that sea salt or desi namak, and then add powdered jaggery, two to three tablespoons, and you will get enough potassium. You will also get benefit of phosphate, which is energy, and also benefit of getting iron and many other minerals. So instead of just getting only high fructose corn syrup, now you're getting healthy sugar with it. And when you are running and doing exercise, you need some sugar. And this will be the best way to get your sugar from the natural jaggery. So two liters can be made at a practically no cost at all. Now, alkaline water is getting to be huge, big craze. And there are Japanese alkaline machines which are knocking at everyone's door in the cities. And each machine costs about 80 
thousand rupees to one lakh rupees and it, it requires maintenance also so should we be installing uh, alkaline water machines in our home i would say absolute waste of money we definitely know that to be healthy our body has to be alkaline but that won't come from alkaline water it will come from alkaline food and we'll talk about it and unhealthy body is acidic so we have to eat food whichever keeps our body alkaline and water if you drink alkaline water by the time it hits your stomach and the stomach the digestive juice is very acidic and it will neutralize that alkaline water so what is the use you lose it right away and don't forget that most of the tap water you are drinking is slightly alkaline in itself so if you want to keep your body alkaline you eat natural alkalizing foods so all the fruits and vegetables are alkaline and most of the commercial foods and dairy and meat are acidic so you know how to balance the best balance is four times alkaline food and one time the acidic food that's why i say that if you eat grain 100 gram eat 400 grams of vegetables and fruit maintain your acid and alkali balance in itself so now you know what is acidic food meat dairy grain bread highly acidic chocolate coffee tea sodas and alcohol they are all acidic so you have to know how to maintain your alkali acid balance in the body not with water but with food now one more question which people frequently ask is should i be drinking warm water or cold water cold water when we mean we mean basically ice water right out of the refrigerator which is almost 0 degrees and or iced water lot of water in the ice so the big problem with ice water typically is that it affects the digestion because for good digestion we need our core temperature or our digestive tract temperature to be little higher because we want the blood to flow to digest the food and in ayurveda we call it jatharagani so if you want to kill your jatharagani then go and drink ice water and i don't think anybody wants to do that so you drink water at the room temperature or drink water at about 20 to 22 degrees which comes right out of our matka or ardan pitcher so our matka naturally gives us a water at the temperature of 20 to 22 degrees and there is no harm in drinking that i'm totally surprised at at the kind of whatsapp message which is circulating uh, 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 in uh, regards to covid 19 and in fact some of the doctors and some of the vaidyas are prescribing that you should have very hot steam and very hot water to kill corona and i want to make it clear to you that scientifically this advice that you have very hot steam and very hot water to kill corona is absolutely wrong in the sense that our body our nose or mouth cannot tolerate a temperature of more than 40 degrees because if we put anything more than 40 degrees centigrade hmm temperature which is basically a little bit more uh, hotter than the lukewarm when we are drinking tea see we drink it in very small sips small sips why are we drinking in small sips because we want the temperature of the tea to come down and we don't want to burn our mouth at any temperature above 40 degrees you will have burn ulcers in your mouth and any steam over 40 degrees your face will burn so why do you want to do that so this advice about very hot steam and very hot water to kill covid-19 is an absolutely scientifically incorrect advice now should we be drinking tap water or bottled water why did we come to the idea of bottled water simply because people stop trusting a uh, tap water it's not that our municipalities are not doing good job even in india municipalities are doing a great job uh cleaning your water because they are following who standards world health organization standards and they are giving you clean water but the air water goes through miles and miles of pipeline and on the way collects lot of wrong elements like heavy metals or get infected if there is a hole in the pipe somewhere so the tap water is not as clean as it should be it has bacteria it can have heavy metals not that municipalities are not doing a good job but because pipeline system makes a mess of our tap water municipal water 
So should we be drinking tap water? If we are going to drink tap water, what are you going to do about it? Or should we be drinking bottled water in the plastic? Now, bottled water in the plastic, as we all know, has got plastic impurities, which are chemicals, which increase the risk of disease and cancer. So plastic water bottle is not only harmful to our health, but it is very harmful to our environment. It is neither sustainable for our body, nor it is sustainable for our environment. Our earth is covered with plastic. Our sea is covered with plastic. And the maximum amount of that plastic is not coming from single-use plastic bags. It is coming from plastic water bottles. So learn how to carry your water, not in plastic, but non-plastic containers. So we have a lot of non-plastic containers in the market now, the bamboo containers, the water canteen and all that. And I saw in India so many varieties and we are ahead of the game because we are making a lot of bamboo water bottles which are being exported. So we are ahead of the game there. And we were ahead of the game in storing water also, that we have matka or earthen pitchers where water stores better. It brings the temperature to 20 to 20, which is most conducive for the body for maintaining temperature balance. Plastic storage of the water is an absolute no, no, both for health and both for, and for environment. So if you want to make, keep your own water and keep it clean, what do you do? At home, as you know, what we do, we install filters. And there are two kinds of filters, RO filters and UV filters. And most of the filters which are installed in Indian city homes are RO and UV combination filters. RO means reverse osmosis filter. So reverse osmosis filter basically removes all the chemicals in the water, removes the heavy metals in the water, and removes the minerals. And some of these minerals are very important and ends up sucking out all the good minerals also. So that is one negative thing about RO filter. UV filter basically removes the bacteria by high temperature, by UV lamp, but it doesn't remove the chemicals and doesn't remove the minerals. So you cannot only do with UV filter alone because you need to remove the heavy metals from the water also. So that is why majority of the filters are a combination of RO and UV filters. Now our water has got a lot of minerals, the natural water. You know that they sell the spring water in the bottom. So what is spring water? It's nothing but natural water. This natural water is coming from the ground, it's ground water. So ground water has got iron. We need iron for making blood. Calcium, we need calcium for our bones. Imagine 30% of your calcium, which your body needs, is coming from the water. Okay. So if your RO filter is sucking out too much of calcium, too much of magnesium, you will have muscle cramps, you will have osteoporosis. So you want an RO filter which will maintain the calcium, which will maintain good metals like copper, little bit of fluoride. Too much of fluoride will destroy your teeth. Less fluoride will also destroy your teeth. So proper amount of fluoride, proper amount of sodium, proper amount of magnesium and zinc, good for our skin, good for our immunity. Okay. So what is happening with RO filters, especially in India, is that RO filters are not standardized. When they are not standardized, they don't have enough minerals in it and men, and the minerals in the water are called TDS. You would have heard this number TDS. Total dissolved solute is called TDS. So if the water TDS is very low, it means you don't have enough minerals. The only people for whom low TDS is good is people who have got kidney disease because they do not want too much sodium and too much of magnesium uh, in their water. So low TDS, is only good for people who have got kidney disease. But ideal TDS, and you should know what your RO filter at home is giving you. And there is a very cheap TDS meter with which you can check your TDS, total dissolved solute, and it should be 300 to 350. When the TDS is 300 to 350, water taste is outstanding, excellent. Taste is very good. If TDS starts going up, the water quality and taste goes down. And when the TDS is over 900, the water tastes bad, like we say heavy water. It doesn't taste, it tastes like metallic taste. So when your water tastes metallic, then you know that its TDS level is very high. Now, 
what kind of water and how much water we drink when we are exercising. We're going to talk about that. So if you're doing moderate physical exercise, like your brisk walking, your gardening, your hiking a little bit, your dancing, your bike riding, but not at a competitive speed, you're playing, but not competitive sports, you're swimming, but not in a competitive mode, you few laps, two or three laps, then you need one to 1 1.5 liters of water, four to six glasses, and plain water will be plenty. Drink before and after so that you can have good performance when you are doing your exercise, you feel good about it. If you are low on water, then you start feeling dizzy or you feel like low energy. So you keep your energy good by drinking four to six glasses of water when you're doing moderate exercise. However, when you're doing intense exercise, strenuous physical exercise, running a marathon race, running three to four miles, you're doing competitive sports, you are doing 10, more than 10, five, 10 laps of swimming, then you need way more water. So you need two to five liters of water, eight to 20 glasses of water, even sometimes more than that if you're doing marathon race. And that water just cannot be plain water. If you drink plain water with a lot of sweating and exercise, then what will you get? Water intoxication. Your body sodium level will go very low and your brain will get swelling and you will become sick. And it can be even health hazard. You will need hospitalization to get sodium. So when you are doing strenuous exercise and when you are uh, sweating a lot, then you should be drinking electrolyte water. So what you do is you drink before and continue to drink two, three, four hours based on the extent of your exercise. Drink three, four hours later after you stop doing exercise. And this water you're drinking has to be electrolyte water. You also need electrolyte water when you are suffering from dehydration because of certain situations, like I said, heat stroke, being out in the sun too long, sweating too much. Uh, next, if you have gastroenteritis, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and so forth. In that case, you're low on water, very low on water and fever. In all these situations, you are better off drinking electrolyte water. And then I said, if you want to drink electrolyte water, don't go running out in the market and buy all these fancy electrolyte waters at the cost of 100, 150 rupees a bottle. Instead, make your own. Take two liters of water, add half a teaspoon of your uh, desi namak, add your powdered jaggery, two to three tablespoons, add a little lemon juice for flavor and make your two liters of electrolyte water at no cost. Now, when to drink water? What are the common sense rules of drinking water? We talked about it partly over the, along the way, but we will again repeat. Do not ignore thirst. Follow our cultural tradition like Ayurveda. Drink in the morning, one to two glasses. Drink before meal. Drink after meal, one hour after meal. Uh, to have a perfect digestion and perfect water balance. Decrease salt and sugar intake. Decrease your dry food intake. Minimize your dry snacks in the packages, in the boxes. Do not start your day with a dry cereal like cornflakes that will put you behind in water. Uh, maintain your urine output at least four to five times a day minimum and follow the cues of low water balance. Like I said, if you feel dizzy, if you feel irritable, if you feel low energy, if you are untimely hungry, all those are cues of low water balance. So again, First thing in the morning, two glasses of water, 30 minutes before meal, one glass of water, 60 minutes after meal, one glass of water. When you eat salty snack, dry food, one to two or sweet food, one to two glasses of water, alcohol, one glass per drink. And then finally, we come from the cultural tradition where every essential nutrient in the body has been given the status of the God. Anna Devta, Pani Devta. So our water God is Lord Varun, and he's always shown with a kalasha water, picture of water in the hand. So I would say, start your day in the morning invoking Lord Varuna. And when there is the sun rises, you rise with it with two glasses of water. Invoke the Varun card, invoke the sun and stay healthy. Thank you very much.